Hi there and welcome to Boston. Yes, time for another Getting Started with series and we are now with Spurs, Tottenham Hot Spurs from the English Premier League. Um, the moment you pick your job up, you get a chance to start a save with Tottenham Hot Spurs, you can be told that you have certain expectations that the chairman wants you to meet. Uh, these include playing possession football, playing attacking football, signing young players to the first team and develop players using the club youth system. And if you look through their ranks, you'll find that there are lots of youngsters that are half decent that should be getting a chance in your matches. Uh, they can be goalkeepers, they can be defenders, you, you're going to have quite a few here. And it's a very exciting young club, uh, a club rather, a, a club of young players that they awesome, I, I enjoy it thoroughly. Now what about the, the whole team itself? And I'll, uh, what are we planning to do with this save? Am I going to try and replicate Spurs completely? Not really, because I, some part of me feels that Pochettino's system is a bit hard to uh, replicate on FM. 18. We can get a few of the elements together. We can try to get as much of the style of play in involved uh, into the game as we can. But I don't think we're going to be able to get it done 100%. But we can at least give it a good shot. And the idea behind this is to get put you on the on a firm grounding when you want to start your saves. What should you expect? Uh, what are the challenges for you, for you moving forward with your team? Um, how would you rotate? Who are the players that you need to play all the time? Who are the players that you can rotate? Um, and uh, other stuff like your staff and your training, all this, you know, this is the whole goal of this series. So one of the first things I do when I go into any club is I look at the financial situation for the club. Now Spurs, needless to say, they've got a fantastic transfer budget so you've got lots of money 65 million pounds uh, wage budget 1.8 very healthy wage budget and you've got a scouting budget now when you get into scouting itself the whole scouting um setup in fm18 you, you we need to we need to be very uh, clear on how we're going to use scouting now for clubs like spurs scouting budget is not a problem because you llm is an issue but for these clubs you can easily just take out four million from this, and you can get like something like another <laughs> form. You can get a four million transfer budget or scouting budget. So scouting budgets are really, really simple for these clubs. The key here is how you use shortlist. So whenever you scout players or you get scout, you send your scouts out. Make sure that you come back and uh, you add them to your shortlist. Now the thing here is this: you don't need your shortlist to. You don't need your players. You don't need to have one hundred percent knowledge of your players. 80% is usually enough that gives you all the attributes you need and that is enough for you to decide whether or not to bring them to the club so what you want to do is you want to populate the shortlist as quickly as you can in pre-season and then after that you know uh, understand your team see where, whether you, there's a shortfall that needs to be met and then go out there get your player and then if you after that point you can actually tone down your scouting you can even reduce your packages if you want to if you into the whole like, I, I don't spend too much money and uh, go from there. Now here, scouting packages, if you want your scouts to go out and get you the best talents, you have to be very, very specific about where you want to send them. Now, I personally believe that it's far better for you to be in charge of the scouting than for the to, for you to delegate it to somebody else. Because um, it's not optimized. Okay, the chief scout doesn't op do it optimally. If you wanted to do it optimally, you'd have to do it yourself, which is you have to like set the world package up, then go to your recruitment team and give them specific assignments like what kind of players are you looking for? Uh, what are the age? What are the ages that you want? Uh, do you want youth players? Do you want players with a certain attribute set? So you can do that. Uh, you can create field, uh, specific uh, scouting assignments for your for your staff. In order for you to do that, you have to take scouting responsibility over. It's got to be your own. Then when you come here and you create the assignments, you can be very specific about what you're looking for. Alternatively, you can go into the team report, look at the squad depth. From here alone, you can just then determine, okay, which are the areas that you want to look at? Or which are the areas that you, you want to focus on? Now, for me, if I was a, a Spurs player, this is one area that I'll be spending a lot of time on. I'll be looking at my squad in a lot of detail, and this is what we're going to do next. So when we get to the squad screen, um, the first thing I normally do whenever I get to the squad screen is I, I have this habit of... Um, make you know this splitting my team up into defense support and attack duties why do i do that is so that i can get a better understanding of my players now if you're looking at the 
defenders of uh, Spurs. I can see, you can see from these attributes alone the reason why they can play the three four two one, and why some of the some of the other clubs struggle with the three four two one. Look at the attributes of their central defenders when it comes to defensive intelligence. 17 for positioning, anticipation, concentration. Then that's their best player. The second best player, Eric Dyer, 17, 15, 14. It's pretty good. Then they've got a youngster in the form of Davinson Sanchez, formerly of Ajax. Got bang, tons of potential, this guy. He's a first team player already. So you want to play him as well because he is actually quite young, 21 years old. So if you want his um, development to, to accelerate, you got to play him in these games. Uh, then you've got to make sure that you, you play him in games that you win. So you got to... There's this uh, element of chance in the game. It's called a pro progression factor. Um, it's a multiply effect. So you got this maximum score that you can get from training based on all the, you know, games that you played, you know, the personality, the score, uh, lots of things here. Then after that, there's a chance factor. It's called the progression factor. Now, this progression factor kicks in because uh, you, you got things like his uh, how did he do in these games was his were his match ratings good uh, was he injured stuff like that they give you a chance between like, I mean to put it in simple terms you know you take the score total score and times 1 or times 5 right so he, maybe he has got a 30 attribute increase then his progression factor is times 5 then he gets like oh wow lots of attributes to be increased so these are things that we have to bear in mind. So when you're looking at the defenders, not bad. A lot of fairly good defenders. You've got Jan Vertonghen, who's probably the weakest of the lot. Yeah, it's 14, 15, 13. Jumping reach, I think his is one of the better ones, 15. So you got to play him at the back line because he's he has got jumping reach and heading. And then uh, when we look at the wingbacks in the team, then wingbacks, not so bad because you've got Serge Aurier, who's very, very fast. And then we've got Trippier, Okay, now Trippier is the opposite of uh, Serge Aurier, where where you might use Serge Aurier against teams that give you a lot of space. Trippier, you're going to use him because he's a bit more cerebral <laughs> fullback. I, I don't know what hell else to call him, a cerebral fullback. He's a smart fullback. And defensively, he's strong. So he can be a pretty good option if you are in matches where you find that uh, there are teams that are uh, tougher to beat, then maybe you want to start with Kieran Tripper. Then if, in matches where you, you want to you take it to the opposition, then you might want to start with Serge Aurier. Why? Because the difference between these two players lies in their men defensive intelligence. Serge Aurier is fantastic going forward. Average defending. His concentration is 10 and his positioning is 10. Now, Kieran Tripper, on the other hand, his average going forward, his acceleration is 14. He's got good crossing, good dribbling. Uh, but when it comes to his positioning, he's of 14 and his concentration is 13. So in terms of his defensive intelligence, he's definitely better in matches for you against the four opposition. Sad news for all Spurs players is going to be the injury to Danny Rose. Now Danny Rose is a phenomenal fullback, right? He's he's got he's got all the qualities you want in a in a in a bombing fullback, right? He bombs on the flanks with acceleration. You can build an entire tactic around the heroes, the whole system around the heroes to bomb down the flanks and create opportunities. If I was playing with Danny Rose in my team, he'd be a wing back on attack and Kieran Triple will, will be my right back. He'll be more on a defense, he'll be more like a support or a defend duty. But man, will I use Danny Rose to the fullest extent I could because this guy is just going to rip through defenses delivering crosses. But unfortunately for us, Danny Rose is injured. So we've got to turn to the younger Kyle Water Peters, who is also decently fast. Now, what do we do with a player like this? Now, when you look at his attributes, his positioning is 12, his off the ball is 9, his concentration is 9, his decisions are 10. So maybe he doesn't know when it's a good time to go forward and when it's a good time to do defending. He's like Alberto Moreno, a younger version, basically. So he might make a lot of mistakes. So do you want to rely on him to be defensive? Probably not. Probably you'd go like, okay, fine, we'll tell Kyle Walker just to attack and we just forget about his defensive side of the game and maybe I'll build a tactic where I have players around Kyle Walker who are more defensive or in, in orientation. So this is how you'd approach using Kyle Walker-Peters in your system. Now, central defenders, we've got a very strong first team. We've got Toby Alderweil, Jan Vertong and Eric Dyer. That goes without a doubt. Then we've got Davinson Sanchez who can come off the bench, but he's a first team player, so you've got to play him in a quite a few matches. Then we've got Serge Aurier, Kieran Tripper, who are 
they both play in the same position. And then you've got Kyle Walker-Peters who has to play in most of the games. You've got Ben Davis as well as a rotational player. He too can come off the bench and play for you. He's also not a bad option. So you've got, there are, there's a lot of depth in this Spurs team that you can begin the season with. They're strong um, defensively. Then when we're looking at the defensive midfielders, when we come to the interesting part of the pitch. Now, in the in midfield itself is where we start asking questions about Spurs. Spurs don't really have a lot of uh, hatchet men in midfield. We've got Victor Wanyama, uh, who's probably the best hatchet man that the side has. However, his, uh, he, he's slow, right? He's not very, very fast. His acceleration is only 12. For the Premiership, that may not be enough. His determination is pretty good, so he makes that up. And, uh, well, he does get into trouble once in a while. So you got to be very careful with his aggression rate. So he can be the kind of player that you start a game with and then you discover very quickly he's picking up yellow cards. And then you're forced into another change. So Wanyama becomes, a he's half decent, but has the potential to become a liability. So this is something that we have to bear in mind when we use a player like Wanyama. Eric Dye can always move into midfield to if Wanyama is not having a good game or if you feel that you want better security, then you use somebody like Eric Dyer. Eric Dyer is definitely a, a much better player in that regard because he's not as aggressive. Other players that can do the job of at least trying to win the ball are going to be players like Musa Dembele. Now, Musa Dembele isn't that bad as well in that regard because he can be a defensive midfielder, but he cannot see the pass. According to these attributes here, I mean, I mean, according to the attributes here, he's a very simple central midfielder. You do not build a tactic around him. He is just a shuttler of the ball. This is my recommendation to you if you are going to start a Spurs safe. Go out there and start scouting for a defensive midfielder. You will probably need another defensive midfielder because of the fact that you're putting all your eggs in one basket. you got Wenyama and Musa Dembele, and that's it. So if either one of these gets injured, your, your machine in the centre of midfield gets affected. So you really, really need to think of getting a defensive midfielder. And when you do get the defensive midfielder into your team, do not make him a first-team player. Look at him as a rotational player. There are plenty of defensive midfielders available in this game. They're all in Italy. Okay, So, yeah, uh, there's so many in Italy. It's just I don't know. I, I just got shocked when I saw this. When I started looking for players when I was playing this. I was, I was playing this for a while. Uh, Spurs. So in bit in the attacking sense of the word, when we're looking at the boys up top and what they bring to the attacking flag, we've got Christian Eriksen, Deli Ali. I mean, it helps that we know this club, right? So we know what Christian Eriksen is is capable of doing. His off the ball is fantastic. Deli Ali is just a beast of a talent at the age of 21. So you got to play him as well. Uh, he's off the ball. He's passing. Is He can be an attacking midfielder. He comes... This... When you play a player like him, you got to be aware of his player traits. He comes deep to get the ball and he arrives late in the opponent's area, which is a very interesting combination. It means that he's always going to make himself available for the pass to his uh, to his midfielders or his defenders. But then when he takes stock, he will need to take lay off the ball to somebody else and get into the box. So that's that's Deli Ali. There's a potential that he also may get injured in the long run. Now, because that kind of a game that he's playing is a very high-intensive uh, game and there is a potential that you may, will start you will need to pay a lot of attention to the medical center reports to make sure that you're not overplaying Delhi Ali and he gets injured because if he does get injured you have another issue then you'll have to start playing Musa Sissoko in his place and he is not a very good replacement for Delhi Ali because Musa Sissoko is more like Ben 8 in case of emergency break glass use Musa Sissoko in my if I were managing Spurs the only reason Musa Sissoko is a rotational player uh, while we're waiting for other players to come back like Eric Lamella or maybe even uh, getting somebody out from uh, the transfer market. But really, Musa, Musa Sissoko is somebody that doesn't fit into the overall scheme. We want to play a 3 4 2 one or even uh, other systems like the 4 2 3 one or the 4 3 one two. Now, in attack, then we're left with the one true great, <laughs> Harry Kane. Harry Kane is the beast, the man, the legend, the complete forward. The English definition, he is the English complete forward. Okay, uh, what, he lacks in, what he lacks in pace, he makes up for in strength, 
jumping reach, ability to control the ball. Um, he's finishing. He's, a, he, he's just just that good. And he's got a fierce long shot. So he's one of those players that brings a lot of things to the table. The problem for Spurs is their, their bench. Their bench features Fernando Lorente. The, 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 it's really bad saying this, but he's the poor man's version of Harry Kane. So he comes in, chances are he's going to come on as a as a substitute in most of your games. Uh, if you look at his player trace, plays with back to goal, looks for pass rather than an attempt to score. Fernando Loriente is playing his back to goal means he's not going to be the kind of player that's going to look for through passes. He's going to play the so he's there are a lot of roles that don't suit him because his player trait is just going to turn he's going to turn his back and he's not going to look for he's not going to be like a DLFS on support. So Fernando Loriente becomes like a poacher or target man on support. That's it. Simple. He's only got two roles that he want to you want to use him for or even a defensive forward. These are things that we, we're looking for at him, uh, with him. So what do you do? So now when you're looking at a Spurs team, the Im- your immediate reaction is going to be, okay, we've seen our players, we know where we are short. If something happens to Harry Kane, we've got a problem. The only player we can play is Fernando Loriente, but he can only play in very limited roles. Then we've got a problem in midfield. If Wanyama picks up too many yellow cards and he sits out of the game suspension, who else can play in that position? Eric Dyer, okay, fine. We push Eric Dyer up. Then we got Toby Alderweireld, we got Jan Vertonghen, and then we got to play Davinson Sanchez. Okay, do we have a plan B? What happens if another one of those gets injured? Then we're gonna have another issue. So your long-term plan for Spurs has to be, you have to scout for a defensive midfielder or a central midfielder can that can, uh, who's positionally strong, can tackle, win the ball, and can distribute the ball. Ideal. If you can find a player can dictate tempo and play the long range pass, you're sold. You've done it. You, you're a genius. You've found the perfect player for your team. The second thing you need to do is you need to find another striker. Now, there are some good, cheap strikers, once again in Italy. <laughs> the transfer market seems to be a bit screwed up in Italy. Uh, you can pick them up for a few million. Uh, with 60 million, you can definitely find a, a striker there and bring him over to England. I mean, who doesn't want to play in the capital of England? So get them, bring in another striker. That's my recommendation. Or turn to your under 33s and look at your. The, the team that you have in the under 23s because there is no reason why you cannot find a defensive midfielder or a striker here. If I'm looking at a, the defensive midfielders, you've got Luke Amos. Luke Amos, I might play him. I might, if I didn't want to go to the transfer market, I'll probably use Luke Amos for most of my games. But here you have to remember, Luke Amos' anticipation is pretty low. So he's a, he's one of the best options that we have in a DM position. Anton Walks is away. He's not that good. And Vincent Janssen is a striker at the age of 23 on loan at uh, Fenerbahce. Mm, not somebody I would depend on to develop. So who else can we deal with? We've got Kazia Sterling. Not that bad. Long way to go before he becomes the finished article. And then we got Antonio Giorgio, not good enough. Got Rio Griffiths and Ryan Loft, also very average strikers. So if you're looking at all these strikers and asking yourself the fundamental question, how long will it take for them to get ready? At least four more seasons. So you need you need a you need a striker now to be a good backup to Harry Kane or the, at least understudy Harry Kane. Okay, what about goalkeepers? Now our Spurs has no problems with goalkeepers. Michael Worm is already 33 years old. Chances are he's going to say he wants to leave. And I probably will let Michael Worm go because you have a goalkeeper here by the name of Paolo Gazzaniaga who can easily step up and take over his spot. So if I were you, I would let... Mr. Michael Worms go when his contract expires, which is going to be very soon when you start this game. His contract will expire. The first thing you do is you tell Paolo, Paolo, welcome to the senior squad. <laughs> so that's it. You get him into the senior squad. You make him smile and you've got yourself a half-decent goalkeeper. When Michael Worms' contract runs out, Michael Worms, say la vie, adios, arrivederci, have a good day and you're done. Okay, now, what about your squad, your full squad? It's important to understand how you're going to play this team. Now, when you play this team the first time around, what you want to do is you want to look at your team and identify who are the four jokers that have to play a lot of your matches. You've got Toby, Hugo, Christian, Harry Kane. 
no problem. These are the players, your best players anyway. They should play every single game. Then we're looking at the rest of the team. Got Watongan, Wanyama, Deli Ali, Eric Dyer, Davidson Sanchez, Serge Aurier, Son Hyun Ming, Fernando Loriente is a rotation. All these players expect to play at least 50% of the games. So you need to be able to rotate because Kieran Tripper is actually a better option defensively than Serge Aurier. And you've got Ben Davis as well. So in terms of how you play your team over the season, you have enough players. It shouldn't be that tough for you to create a tactic that um, allows you to develop these players to the best of their ability. When it comes to tactics for Spurs, very simple. We want to create several tactics here. Uh, I want to try and maintain the flavor of the 3 4 2 1 where I can. I'm not saying it's a perfect replication, but at least it's uh, I want to try and get some of the elements in there. Uh, we I also wanted to get Terry Venable's 4 3 2 1 Christmas tree formation working. Uh, it's a bit harder than that. And uh, so these are some of the systems that I came up with. Now, when it comes to the 3 4 2 1, it plays uh, in several ways. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to be able to switch the focus of attacks. Now, I can go left flank, I can go right flank. If I choose to go to the right flank, then he becomes a winger, bring back on attack. This guy becomes a winger on support. Then I swap the ball winning midfielder with the CM on support. So the ball winning midfielder will go this to the right and the CM will come to the left. If it's a wing back on attack on the on the right flank, then we swap. If it's a wing back on the left flank, then it looks like this. What about the roles and duties? Pretty simple. Distribute the centre backs. Nothing special for this guy. Swing back on attack. Now, if he's if he's attacking, then he stays on normal. That's the goal, right? Then uh, if he is not attacking, like um, how we if he, he's not going to be the on attacking duty, he sits narrower. So when he's on attacking duty, he actually sits like default. Right. Then we got a ball winning midfielder, shoot less often, dribble less. With central midfielder on support, few risky passes, dribble less, shoot less often. We got two attacking midfielders, shoot less, dribble less, move in the channels, run wide with ball, and then shoot less, dribble less, move channels, run wide with ball, and then we got a centre forward and support in the form of Harry Kane, who's told to close down more. Now, how do I play this like thing? Tough matches away from home, I probably go standard fluid. Yes. And then uh, pass into space depends on the situation, but pass into space is the shot I use. Move ball into box, and these are the shots that I'll be using in most of my games. If uh, I'm playing against a team that I expect to beat, maybe on a stretch them a bit more, maybe go control structure. That's a pro prob probably start with control structure. If the team is defending very, very deep and I need to move them around, I'll probably move pass into space. Then we, there'll be a bit more room in roam from positions, but I'll be very, very careful of pushing up the defensive line. Now, people I know want to see Spurs play with a pushed-up defensive line because they hear the commentators going to play with a pushed-up defensive line. Problem is, we do that on FM18. With those wing-backs, you're probably going to also ship a lot of goals. And we've done okay. Uh, we've had a lot of 1-0 wins. We're, okay, we beat PSG 2-0, but Swansea, uh, Swansea, sorry, I was using a different tactic. I was actually using... Uh, <laughs> I was using a strikeless system, as you can see here. I was testing a strikeless system out with Spurs. Um, as I have a theory in my head about you can actually set a pretty decent strikeless tactic up with Spurs as well. So this is the uh, three four two one. What about the Christmas tree special? I call this the Christmas tree special, which is not very different from the three four two one. But here I've got Ericsson playing as an attacking playmaker. We got an attacking midfielder, attacking a centre, complete forward. We got a wing back on attack here. Um, two central defenders, a wing back on support, Kyrie Relo, DLP on defense, ball winning midfielder, notice no PS, no TIs, uh, no PIs rather, one attacking playmaker on support, one attacking midfielder on attack. Why is Deli Ali's role attack? Because he's actually, he actually just comes deep to get the ball, shoots less often, move in the channel, slows down much more, complete, fo complete forward on attack in the final third. Instructions, control, flexible, work ball into box, use of side, trap, high tempo, prevent, short goalkeeper distribution. So these are the two tactics uh, that I uh, have created for Spurs. Now, I'm not going to share the Spurs strikeless tactic yet because I still want to tweak it slightly and I might do that at a later date. But for now, I hope you find these two tactics useful for your safe with Spurs. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. You can always look me up on Twitter at Bustinet and addicted to FM.com, my website. Once again, I'd like to thank all my patrons for their continued support of this channel. You make these kind of shows possible for the rest of the community. So you guys take care, have a good one, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.